goals she's had in any game this season. Zappi throwing, caught, Henry, touchdown. Whoa. So Henry, who scored the prior touchdown, went into the medical tent for just a moment, comes back and scores again. How about this throw by the kid? Admit it. Admit it. And we're not going to move on until you admit that you thought that the Patriots were going to find a way to lose this game. Folks, this is a rare episode this season. An episode where, where we're talking about a New England Patriots victory. A victory over a team with a winning record. Uh, to, yes, yes, the quarterback went down, and maybe, but so did ours, right? I mean, he Mac went down, he went down in quality and down in, in, in ability, so he went down to the locker room. Same thing, we're playing our backup too. Uh, not quite the same thing. Um, the Steelers went in 7-5. and five. The Pats went in 2-10. and ten. Yes, uh, their quarterback, I think his name is Kenny Pickett, I, something like that. Right? I think I nailed it. Couldn't pick him out of a lineup. But remember Mitchell Trubisky was supposed to be the big thing in Chicago, and now he just it looks like a quarterback who has ability but makes dumb decisions or is just, you know, he's just not that good. Ability isn't everything. And it's a weird feeling. It's a, it's a weird feeling celebrating a victory. It's a weird feeling celebrating when... Just last week, I'm saying to myself, and am I, am I celebrating? I don't know. But but just last week, I'm saying to myself, let's just let them lose. Lose out. Call it, you know, time of death, week, the week five or whatever, the, the Washington week. We'll call that one time of death. Um, but yet, when you're actively watching the game, it is difficult to root, to, to not root for them. And it's weird because you're also at the point where a pick happens and I go, oh, there's cool. Oh, a touchdown. Cool. Oh, wow. Another touchdown. Wow. Another touchdown. Like, that's really cool. But you're not getting pumped because, you know, maybe if I was at the game, I'd be excited, but it's not leading to something. It's not saving something. It's not like, are we at the point we're building? I don't think we're building on anything. Last week I was crapping all over Zappy. This week he did enough. He did. He had the. He had a heck of a first quarter, a heck of a first half. I said that I don't think the Patriots could score thirty points. Never mind thirty points in a game, which they still haven't. I don't think they could score thirty points for the rest of the season combined. And I've kind of, you know, that one seems like it. It might have sailed away because they put up twenty-one points. First of all, they scored on the first opening drive ever this season. Second, uh, Zappi had three touchdowns, none to wide receivers. You know that, but wide, they were wide receivers. Yet, their wide receivers aren't great. But um, Juju showed up a couple times. Even saw Thornton doing something out there. It wasn't a great deal, but he was something. I don't know if Mike Kosecki caught a pass or was even throwing a pass. Hunter Henry was all over the place. Two touchdowns, looked good. Like, it looked like what you'd think what you were hoping this season would look like, you know, touchdowns to the tight ends, uh, uh, you know, the defense playing good enough uh, at some point, almost, almost screwing it up, almost doing enough mistakes. Uh, the special teams though, oof, that, that block punt was a killer. Um, well, or was it? I'm really tired. Um, was that where they, they did four and out either way, just not a good look, not a good look. But I'm watching this, and, and we're texting around, and I'm going, it's zappy fever. This was the first time a quarterback has thrown three touchdowns for the Patriots in, in the first half since 2018, I think they said. Now, the second half, they were blanked. The second half was more like we've been used to. But maybe they were just trying to run things out and get through it. I don't know. It's weird because 
I am happy they won, but I'm not like over the moon. Is that still saying the kids say? Uh, Cause what did that accomplish? It felt, you know what it did for the play. Like no matter what, as a fan, you're rooting for the, you know, for the, for the, the what's the best for the team. And maybe what's best for the team is getting the best draft pick. And look, I'm not saying they're gonna. They're not going to uh, you know finish seven and ten. That's not happening. Uh, oh, you know what? I hope it doesn't happen <laughs> because seven to ten doesn't get you anything. Well, I don't know what it. I really don't even know what the draft route is. But I would assume that you want the top guy. And folks, I don't know who even know who that is. You know what you're getting with this podcast, right? A guy right now who watched the game who's got his dog smushed up against him, who's sitting on the couch, who's trying not to fall asleep, trying not to yawn into his recorder, and just trying to kind of process how he feels about this game. And he he is me. I am not Ricky Henderson. I do not like to talk in the third person. I'm trying to figure out how I feel. And do I want them to keep winning? I don't know. It's like there's a small part of me that's like, yes, just win, baby. Because I'm tired of people complaining and, and yelp and, and yapping and, and, you know, like talking about moving on from Belichick. I, I, whatever happens, happens. I just, I'm so tired of hearing about it or seeing headlines about it. Uh, I'm seeing, seeing like local news, comp- news organizations tweeting sarcastic tweets. The Patriots scored a touchdown. Wow. It's like, yeah, that's not why we, we read the news. For, we, we don't go to you for that. We'll go to other other resources of that, not for you. Um, but, and Zeke looked pretty good out there. You know, Pat, like catching out of the backfield. Like, I think that's what they got to do. They got to play with, with Zeke out of the backfield, pepper in the tight ends as much as they can, and every so often, holy shit, every so often throw to a wide receiver um, to keep, you know, in these games. But it's like, it's funny, I didn't even think of this, that the Patriots were so bad that they flexed a, a um, Patrick Mahomes-led Chiefs out of a Monday night game. Like, that's how bad the Patriots are. I thought, oh, you know, get rid of the Patriots, but, you know, they don't want them in there. But the other team's the Chiefs. I could never see a Patriots game being flexed out of a Monday night because of their opponent. I mean, maybe, maybe because they never played a team as bad as the current Patriots. I don't know. But that just seems weird. It's just, it's interesting. It's weird looking at this right now, seeing the Patriots are scored 21 points. And then, like, that was, not only was that over 20 points, but that was done with the other team scoring less than you. That's how you win a game. And it's shocking. But their second half, they did nothing. They did nothing, and they didn't have to do anything because nobody did anything in the third quarter. Then... You know, shit happened in the fourth quarter. They came really close. But thankfully, that stupid play by... When they were fourth and two and they threw a bomb, what was that? Like, you're not just like, you know... This isn't about um, trying to find what you have and trying to make the best of what you what you can, you know, have left in this in this uh, season. The, the Steelers are in the hunt. This, you know, after losing to the Cardinals and this, that, that is, that looks pretty bad and people are complaining, but they're seven and six. And I'd be like, wow, if the Pats were seven and six, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. I mean, maybe it wouldn't though. Maybe that would be kind of too middling. Um, I don't know. Or maybe they realistically don't think with a, with QB one down that it's even worth Winning, maybe now they just realize they're not going anywhere, so why bother? I don't know. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take each game as it is, as its own entity. Look for the good stuff. I am, I can't help myself. I know it's probably best that they lose, but I'm root, I keep rooting for them during the game. I'm not getting pumped. I'm not getting excited. Um, like, like something crazy is going to happen. But, oh, like, you know, this is, the, the Zappy's the answer. And they're going to, uh, there was some report that he said, you know, when he got cut, 
he said, "Don't worry." When he made it back to the team, he's like, "Don't worry. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the starter. I'm gonna get the starting job." Like that. That just shows confidence, or maybe he's like, you know, I know I'm better than Mac. I don't know, and I don't even know if he's better than Mac. You know, I've said many times, "Oh, Zappy's not the answer." It's just everyone's so frustrated with Mac that they want to see Zappy. And it wasn't like he did anything great out there, but he did enough. He did enough, and uh, that's all you can ask for, I think. Unless we want them to lose. I don't know. Do you guys want them to lose? Like, I can't be upset that they won. They could possibly win one more game this year, the Jets. So they'd be 4-13. and 13. That's still pretty bad, right? Right? That's got to be still be good for the draft. I don't know. It's like, who cares about the draft right now? I just want to watch next week's game. And I was happy. I was happy that they won today. I admit it. I can't help myself. I can't actively root against them while the game's going on, especially when they're actually winning. When they're losing and they look like shit, then I could be like, ah, and I get all angry and like frustrated and like, ah, this is, you know, just keep losing, blah, 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 like last week, just how pitiful it was. But when they're winning, I'm like, oh, I'm, it, this, I remember this feeling, you know? Boy, boy, are we spoiled. Are we spoiled around here or what? All right, that's it. I'm not going to bother you anymore. Um, it, by the time you listen to this, the few, the the few, the proud who do listen, uh, it is Friday morning. And I want to tell you I'm doing something else now. If you, you, you like sports, obviously, because you have to like sports to put up with me. Uh, but if there are other things you may like, like television or Christmas, I'm doing another podcast, uh, a 25-day podcast. I'm doing an episode every single day covering a Christmas sitcom episode. Uh, that's right. That's right. And uh, just yesterday, Thursday, I put up an episode covering the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, you know, okay show. But I'm going to give you a little, a, little, a little spoiler. Now, it's not much of a spoiler because the episode's probably up the same time that this episode's up. But on Friday, today, uh, December 8th, uh, or, well, I might get this up before December 8th. Probably not. Um, the, the most latest episode is on Three's Company. Well, there's a show you, 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 you haven't thought about in a while, right? Go to fansoutexperts.com or check out Geek Mentality uh, wherever podcasts are available. And you could be one of the few and proud listeners of that show as well. But that's it. I'm not going to bother you anymore. You can find me on Twitter at Patriots underscore pod and me personally at Mikey underscore C. And um, I don't know. Go Pats? <laughs> Fans not experts.